Now, Rejection Proof by Jia Zhang claims it will help you in how to beat fear and become invincible. Who doesn't want that? But there have been so many books written on this subject, and I've got to say that most of those books are quite unmemorable. I was a little bit skeptical when I saw this title. But I have to say, not knowing Jia Zhang and being skeptical of the subject matter, that this is probably one of the best business books that I've read in recent years. My name's Graham Brown, and this is my book review. So why are we talking about rejection and why Jia Zhang? Well, Jia Zhang first, he is a Chinese immigrant to the US, came across as a business student, typical sort of Asian family progression, worked really hard, got into good business school, got good grades, got into a successful blue chip company, et cetera, et cetera. Went on to start his own business and when he launched his business, he was pitching a venture capitalist and the venture capitalist rejected him. And that whole sort of unraveling of his world and that sort of pain associated with rejection compelled him to go online and start looking for information about how to become better and how to do his next pitch such that he doesn't fear rejection. And what happened was is this opening up, this going down a rabbit hole of inquiry about rejection and really understanding what rejection is and how it impacts us because we don't give it enough credit. You and I face rejection on a daily basis, but I don't think we're fully aware of how it keeps us comfortable within that comfort, comfort zone in that gilded cage. And what Jia Zhang does is in this book is completely unravel it and put it into the spotlight so we can understand how it affects us and importantly, how to overcome it. So let's talk about rejection. Now here's the interesting thing is that everyone faces it and scientists, psychologists, biologists have proven that the, you know, the pain associated with rejection that we feel is very similar to physical pain. So, you know, the most classic example is when you walk up to a boy or a girl and you ask them on a date and you get rejected. And, you know, the ground opens up and swallows you up whole. We physically feel that rejection. And the question is why? Why do we feel that? Well, it turns out that rejection is an evolved response. So, you know, we human beings are social beings and we've been living together for hundreds of thousands of years in societies, loose-knit societies, small societies, small, you know, Neolithic groups, all the way up to modern societies. And in the early days that, you know, the consequences of rejection, social rejection could be fatal if you were ostracized from a group, a small village, you could end up starving, being eaten by predators, you know, succumbing to the elements. So rejection was a bad thing and we evolved both socially and biologically such that, uh, you know, we learned to associate social rejection with physical pain. So, you know, what happened was is we ended up a society of people who feared rejection very much because even though we may not uh, first person experience the, the consequences of being left outside of a social group, we have learned that from our ancestors that that is a bad thing to do. So the question is, is why does that now apply to us now? Why does a girl or boy rejecting us now cause so much pain when, you know, that's not going to be a life or death situation? Well, firstly, the brain has, you know, been around for hundreds of thousands of years as a, a social brain. So those responses aren't unlearned very quickly. And secondly, it creates these many layers of experience. So, for example, when you uh, are young and you are rejected and you will get rejected because that's just part of growing up, what happens is it reconfirms to us the pain of rejection. And therefore, you know, we there, then associate these situations with pain. So we avoid them in future. You know, I can remember being maybe 14, 15 years old at a school disco with a group of mates and being approached by a group of girls of similar age. And I remember these girls being behind us and they tapped all my friends on the shoulders 
um, this girl was tapping the, them on the shoulder from behind and saying, hi, just introducing herself. And I was the last in the line. And then she tapped me on my shoulder. And I turned around and she just looked at me and went, no. And I can remember that rejection. And even today, when I think about it, I can remember that very vividly and what I felt. And you may think, well, you know, that was a long, long time ago. That's 30 years ago, right, for me. Why does that still impact me? even though I don't think about that on a daily basis. Well, it creates these many layers of experience. You know, what happens next is, you know, you grow up, but you layer these experiences on top of that base experience, which reconfirms your initial experience. And it creates this conviction, you know, next time we avoid rejection and that reconfirms to us that that was a good thing to do. You know, build that up over many years of experience when you become an entrepreneur, you're in a situation where you avoid rejection. You know, you're not asking a girl out on a date, but this time you might be asking a venture capitalist for money or asking a business partner for a favor or pitching to a customer or a client. So in those situations, those original experiences has a profound impact on how we behave today. So, physical pain, we feel rejection. So how do you deal with it? Let's talk about how you actually deal with it. How do you actually become rejection proof? And this is where the book really delivers. And I think that's why it's one of the best business books out there today. Now, most advice about rejection and fear usually revolves around dusting yourself off and getting on with it, or trying to tell you that it's not that bad after all. But the thing is, as I've just discussed with you, is that you know hundreds of thousands of years of experience and a brain that's hardwired to associate rejection with pain doesn't get unwritten so far. So simply saying, oh, don't worry about it, there's plenty more fish in the ocean, or as they say here in Japan, there's plenty more stars in the sky. Just saying that doesn't help because the physical pain is real. And when it comes to facing that situation again, the body remembers not the physical pain, not that adage that, oh, there's more fish in the ocean. You know, we remember the emotion, not the logic. So therefore we end up editing ourselves. So that's why most advice about rejection doesn't work. And that's why the advice in here and what Jia Zhang does is groundbreaking. Because what he does is he embarks on a hundred days of rejection and it's 100 days of rejection therapy and there's a little bit documented about this online but not a lot but what it does is it says that the only way to deal with rejection is to physically and deliberately put yourself into situations where you will face rejection on a daily basis so that you become desensitized to it and what Jia Jiang does is he embarks on this 100 day journey where he puts himself into these situations which are very funny but also have profound lessons for us and the first one is that you know you only can overcome rejection by taking control and putting yourself into the situation so for example he walks into Krispy Kreme donuts and he asks the woman to make him a you know five donuts in the shape of olympic rings and knowing that he's going to get rejected he asks it's just this process he puts himself through to you know desensitize himself to this but actually in that situation she agrees and she makes these olympic donut rings for him so he's surprised by the result and he said actually i feared this all along but i got a yes so what was the problem here so the first thing is to do this every day. And I talk about how I'm doing it and how I'm applying rejection therapy to get results in my life. The second thing is to not run away. So what tends to happen is, is when we put ourselves in these situations or we find ourselves in these situations and we get rejected and we get a no, how do we respond? Well, the most common response, whether it's the girl in the disco or asking a VC for money or asking a customer to buy our product, the most, the most common response is to run away. So we get a no and we assume that we have been rejected. But what Jia Jiang discovers is that the best response to this situation isn't to run away, but to ask why. And here's why. In one scenario, he walks up to a random stranger, knocks on their 
front door in Texas, of all places, where people say, you know, you'll get shot for doing that round here. He walks up to a random house, knocks on the front door, and he says, um, can I plant a flower in your garden? And the guy looks at him very oddly and says, no. Now, most people would say, okay, fine, and walk away and sort of, you know, tail between their legs, beat a retreat. But what Jia Zhang discovers is rather than accept a no, ask why. And the guy says, well, because I have a dog, and if you plant those flowers in the front garden, the dog will dig it up. But if you go over the road, there's a lady over there that will most likely take your flowers. So he took his advice, went over the road, knocked on the door, and the woman was delighted, and he planted the flowers in her garden. Now, there's an interesting lesson to be learned here is that asking why might not help you in terms of getting a yes, because a no is a no in most cases. But what it does do is two things. Firstly, it desensitizes the pain because what he learned was the guy wasn't rejecting him for being a weirdo, but he just had, you know, he had a situation which wasn't conducive to taking the flower at that time. So, you know, he said, I had a dog, etc. So what he found out was in most cases, people reject you not because of you, but because of them and their situation. It's important to learn that because that helps you in dealing with asking. And the second thing is that it helps you, you know, find an alternative solution. So in this instance, he found somebody who would take the flowers. So if you ask why, you know, you might not get what you want, but you might get something like what you wanted. And there are many examples of that in this book where he walked up to somebody and asked for something, got a no, but rather than retreat, he asked why they gave the response. And from that, he was able to then ask a second question, you know, how about this? And they said, yes. So it's really important to ask why rather than run away. Now, the third reason and the, the, the third takeaway from how to beat rejection and from rejection proof is use humor and how important humor is in asking. And he found that when he used humor, he was significantly more effective than when he asked with a straight face. And there's a, a biological and evolutionary reason for this is that humor we have developed as social beings to both mitigate pain and to connect with other people socially you know you can connect with people through humor so powerfully and it's the same with rejection if you ask with a smile or you ask in a funny way you're far more likely to get a result even if they say no they may then lead you on to something else or they may see the funny side of the situation and that has a really positive result on you because then you're so much less fearful of rejection in the first place. So that's rejection proof. Let's talk about how I'm using rejection therapy in my daily life so you can think about how you can use it to beat fear and become invincible as an entrepreneur. So like you, I probably do the same thing every day in the morning. You know, you may be commuting to work, you may be going for your morning run. This morning, like every morning, I went on a bike ride along the coastal path here in Japan. I do it every morning and more or less see the same faces every morning. And that could be the same for you when you're commuting to work or cycling, whatever. So how can I apply rejection therapy in this situation? Well, what I consciously did this morning was said to myself, I'm going to smile at every single person that I pass today, whether or not they smile back at me. And I practiced this. And at the beginning, a little bit hard, a little bit difficult, but I got into the groove. And then people started smiling back at me. And you know, the interesting thing is this is Japan and that just doesn't happen. You know, between people who don't know each other, you just don't smile at people. So there's even a bigger barrier to rejection here because it's socially ingrained. It's just not what you do. But, you know, I want to challenge that because I don't want to be, you know, forced into that gilded cage by social convention. I want to go out and overcome my fear of rejection. So I'm smiling at everybody that I pass on the bike. Yeah, they think I'm weird. Yeah, they think I'm a strange foreigner. But some people smile back at me. And then I say hello or good morning or hi gozaimasu in Japanese to people. And so people nod and smile back. You know, and it's 
I get such a rush when people smile back. I think, yes, it works. I got a result. And I overcome that fear of rejection. And, you know, the interesting thing is that, you know, I said this earlier about asking why. Well, one of the reasons people reject you, one of the major reasons isn't to do with you, it's to do with them. And I'm pretty sure that the people that didn't smile back, you know, of course, the people that didn't look at me in the first place, forget those, but the people that didn't smile back looked at me a little bit strange. I bet when they were walking off or cycling away, bet they were thinking, ah, I wish I'd smiled at that guy. And isn't that how you feel sometimes when somebody says hello to you in the street and you forget to say hello or you blank them, you say, ah, I wish I'd smile back. I feel rude now. It's with the other person and not with you. So I've been practicing that, just a small thing today, and that's important, small steps. You can do that in small things every day. And it's not about doing it in the big things necessarily, it's about doing it in the small things. Because this answers the question, why should you practice rejection therapy on such small, innocuous things on a daily basis? What has that got to do with making you a better entrepreneur? Well, it has everything to do with making you a better entrepreneur because those small things build up to the bigger things. You know, if I spend a life, you know, head down in my comfort zone, like 99.9% .9 of the people out there, ignore everybody that I pass in the street, don't say hello to people, then, you know, I train my brain to behave like that. And then when it becomes the time to ask for the big things, so like money, or request or favor where we really do feel fearful what happens is we're taking a big step from being the guy that is completely in my comfort zone and outside of possibility of rejection to a big step where now i'm asking for something big but hey if i'm stepping that up and i'm doing these little things every day it's not such a big step anymore is it it's only half a step so to get from there to there i have a lot more confidence i have a much wider sphere of confidence that i feel that i can do that and you know if i do get rejected i have the strategies to deal with it you know i can ask why or i can use humor or you know i don't beat a retreat that kind of thing so it's so important to do this on a daily basis and you know there are many strategies that i'm employing to get results to get me out of my comfort zone so it could mean, for example, just smiling at people in the street, saying hello to people. You know, they may think you're crazy, but it doesn't matter. They don't think you're crazy. That's the self that's the self talk that we fear rejection. Oh, I can't smile to this person because they think I'm crazy. Nobody thinks that. They're always going to regret not smiling back. And you know, most people will smile back if you deliberately smile back at, you know, if you smile at people, most people are going to give you a response, right? So doing that, you know, talking to people, um, asking for directions from strangers, even though you know the uh, the way, it's just to get yourself into that habit of doing it. Complimenting people in the street, just to get yourself into that habit of doing it. You know, nobody, you know, doesn't like being compliment, right? Complimented on whatever it is, their, you know, how cute their dogs are or, you know, their shoes or how cool their tires or whatever. Just get into that habit and just do it, do it. Get into the habit of, you know, putting yourself into situations where you can be rejected because you are in control. And the more you do it, the more you become desensitized to the whole situation, the stronger you become when it comes to the bigger ask. And that makes you such a, a better entrepreneur. So, Let's talk about why I think this is a good book for entrepreneurs. And I think it comes down to this, is that there are so many business books out there. You know, you can take like the Richard Branson books and the Mark Cuban books. I think they're fantastic. You know, they really give us inspiration about how to be as entrepreneurs and what's possible. But the challenge is, is that, you know, how can I actually use that information on a daily basis? It's great knowing that Richard Branson is, you know, a, a cool billionaire entrepreneur, but how can I actually use that information on a daily basis to make myself a better entrepreneur? It's a little bit difficult because it's like going from zero to a hundred, right? There's such a big gap between him and me as I see it. But taking something like rejection proof, you can actually employ this straight away on a daily basis. Yes. Some of the examples, most of the examples in this book are extreme, but 
it just goes to show what's possible and you can build yourself up to that. You don't have to go knocking on strangers' doors, but you can do small things with purpose on a daily basis and that will make you so much stronger. And when it says here how to beat fear and become invincible, I truly believe that this book can do it. You know, and I'm not saying that about any other business book out there. And whilst it doesn't set out to you know, uh, model itself as a business book. I believe that fear is the number one reason why we fail in business as entrepreneurs because it holds us back. And if we're over, if we can overcome fear, we can break down barriers everywhere in our business. Think about it. You know, have you got a fear of making a presentation? Do you fear getting up on stage? Do you fear hitting the publish button, you know, making that video, whatever it is, asking that business partner, whatever it is, these are the things that we face on a daily basis, right? And as entrepreneurs, we all live by selling in our different ways, whether that be face-to-face or on stage or writing a blog post. And fear is the main enemy in that situation. If we can crush fear, we can become so much better as entrepreneurs and I really believe that Rejection Proof is a book that can help you do it and I'm employing it and I challenge you to employ rejection therapy on a daily basis. If you are, if you're thinking about it, if you are you know, conscious of situations where you have a fear of failure or rejection, then I'd really be interested to know how you're dealing with it or, you know, what you feel about it. Also, what you feel about my book review. Leave your comments below this video be fantastic to hear what you got out of this book, whether you're thinking of buying this book, and if you have read this book, how you're employing the strategies on a daily basis to make you a better entrepreneur.